Pad Thai for breakfast, aren't we fancy, Rocco? Yeah, this turned out incredible. Just devouring this. Can't believe it. Yeah, I'm gonna finish this up and we've got some plans for a little backpacking trip nearby here that I'm gonna drive over to. Got round two all packaged up, ready for tonight. A good hearty and tasty meal. I think I'm ready to get going. All right, I think we're all packed up, ready to go. The van should be safe here for a couple nights. It's pretty quiet here, we're far out. I saw another channel was robbed recently. Absolute worst nightmare in this lifestyle. So I'm headed to try and climb Mount Van Wagenen. I tried to do this last year as a day hike. I got part way there and it occurred to me I'd set way too large of a goal post for myself in a day hike. So this time we'll break it up into two or three days. The weather forecast is a bit unsettled. It's like winter, it's just sitting there waiting for a chance to break on through, but last I checked, tomorrow's supposed to be clear. I hope it's gonna be clear or else it's just gonna be an overnight camping trip. A bit drizzly out today. Even though we don't have a perfect bluebird forecast, it just feels good to get out for a journey. The journey truly is 99% of the adventure. As much as I love standing on top of a mountain and getting that viewpoint, it's funny how the mind just gets honed in on that moment when it's it's only like 1% of it. 99% of it, it's just this, getting there and getting back out. This is where most of the enjoyment comes from. All right, I made it around the lake. It's gonna continue up this valley, up over a pass, and that'll drop me down onto the Choku Trail. And I'll be camping down there tonight. Ah, the rain's really coming down. Rocco started getting cold. I had to put her underneath here in my jacket, keep her warm. It's just too hard for her to be out in the weather like this. I don't know, I might have to bail on this idea. I was hoping it wouldn't be raining this much. It's too bad. Yeah, it looks like my legs are taking me back to the van. I'm okay with a little drizzle, but not pouring rain. It's cold out, it feels like it's gonna start to snow. The enjoyment factor is just not there. Not for me, not for Rocco, so I'm gonna go cozy up next to the wood stove. Well, I'm glad I made the decision to turn around. The Hyperlite backpack failed miserably at keeping my sleeping bag dry. It is 100% drenched. I'm glad I'm not 20 kilometers out there and figuring this out. I would have been in for a very cold night.
Yeah, I've never just gone out into the mountains for a couple weeks and been like, okay, let's just ignore the weather forecast and face the elements head on as they come. But I think if I ever did do that, yeah, I'd just like pack in a tarp and uh, hunker down whenever it started to rain because I feel like all waterproof gear really does is buy you enough time to set up an actual shelter. Well, today's bluebird forecast definitely came true. This is my one chance to shine before uh, it's going to start raining all over again. So I've just uh, come up here to the Paddy Peak Trail. I'm told this is drivable, but from looking at it, it looks uh, like ATV width, and I feel like I'm going to shred the heck out of my van, so I might as well just e-bike it. I can see tire treads. People are definitely bringing their 4x4s up this, but I'm glad I gave Humpty Dumpty a pass. Probably would have knocked another year or two off its already shattered lifespan. Gotta be super careful going through these narrow tunnels. You never know when you're gonna come face to face with a bear. This bike has this uh, annoying over voltage protection built into it. When you're climbing on a steep hill and you put on too much throttle, it just suddenly cuts all power and you get thrown forward against the handlebars as the bike starts rolling backwards. I hate how they program that in. Like. Even look right now, if I go full throttle, it'll just cut out. Like I can't even get over this stuff without walking. Like when I'm going up steep mountain roads like this, it's like forget about it. Just get off and walk. This bike does not have the torque available. I've never seen that before. A helicopter just landed on the, the summit of Patty Peak. Those cheaters. I had some comedy videos downloaded on my phone last night, Bill Hicks and George Carlin. I can't believe how funny these guys still are. Like 20, 30 years later, they're funnier and more relevant than like the vast majority of comedy that we have available nowadays. Like Joe Rogan, I'll listen to his podcast now and then. I don't mind it, but him, him as a comedian, I, I don't know. I just don't find him funny. I don't know how he's uh, like making these specials and, and selling out arenas and all this stuff. Like I, I found Dane Cook funnier than him. Well, that's as far as I can take the bike. Pretty sure the helicopter's still up there. Maybe they're uh, servicing an antenna or something. Well, that rain poncho yesterday, that was a waste of money. Did absolutely nothing for me. <laughs> like this jacket soaked through, my shirt was wet, my underwear was wet. That went really bad. I guess I could have pitched tent there up at the lake as soon as it started raining, but I just wasn't happy with the amount of distance I'd covered. I don't think it was enough to make that trip a success. There they go. Didn't sleep very good last night. I feel like a dull cookie today. Had my gloves one second ago, now I don't. Don't know what happened to them. I also filled my water bottle before I left, but I forgot to put it in my backpack. Just one of those days. Well, here we are at the 1% uh, of today's journey, and it certainly is uh, a beautiful 1%. Looking towards the Mount Skookum Volcanic Complex over there, that's uh, where Radelite Peak is. As far as I'm concerned, one of the most beautiful mountain faces in all of the Yukon. It's Bennett Peak and Bennett Lake, looking towards Carcross. And yeah, I hope this, uh, this tower doesn't mess up the drone. As much as I want to call it a day, crack a beer, camp right here, my sleeping bag is still drenched, all the down is clumped up. I gotta go into town to the laundromat, throw it in a dryer for an hour.
Yeah, I feel like my whole life is just a cycle of getting dirty and trying to get clean again. But Whitehorse is a really nice city for van life. It just has everything you need and it's easy to get around. There's basically like one street that you need to know. It pretty much takes you everywhere. And then drive 10 minutes out of the city and there's all these really nice free camp spots to stay at. But I'm just checking uh, the comments on my Bill Putnam hut video where I did the trail maintenance and it sounds like some people have been out there hiking so it makes me feel really good to know that the effort that I put into that has made a wee bit of a difference in the world like I uh, feel really fortunate to uh, live this lifestyle and the trail maintenance is like the most direct and straightforward way that I can give my time back to the community. I uh, also tried to touch up the King George Trail back in the spring. I went out there, but the uh, river was just too deep. I couldn't get across, so maybe next year I can touch that one up. I just keep accumulating trails, and every spring I do the rounds and try to clean them all up. But yeah, this summer uh, in Alaska, it just rained so much, and I, I just feel like I didn't get out nearly as much as I wanted to. And now, and now I feel like it's crunch time. I just have the itch to get out there as much as I can. So I'm going to wrap up this episode here and uh, just like start researching and try to line up another adventure as quickly as I can. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope everyone is doing good and I'll see you in the next one.